My name is Jim Birchtold. I'm the directing attorney for the Consumer Rights Project here at Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada. In this segment, I want to talk about repayment plans for unpaid rent. And I want to give you four things that you may want to think about if you're considering entering into a repayment plan. Now, the first one is timing. Right now, there is a pause on evictions in the state of Nevada. And what that means is landlords can't obtain evictions. They can't give the tenants eviction notices and courts aren't processing evictions. So does it make sense to enter into a payment plan right now when your landlord can evict you? Well, it sort of depends. And, um, the, the, the pause on evictions will only last as long as the emergency ends. Once the emergency ends, um, the rent that has not been paid will be owed and your landlord can potentially evict. But will there be something else in place at that time that might help you? Some kind of required payment plan, for example. We just don't know at this point. But you might be in a better bargaining position if you wait until the end of the emergency to execute any repayment plan. Now keep in mind that during the emergency, a landlord cannot force you into a repayment plan. So if you are being pressured by your landlord, if your landlord is harassing you to sign a repayment plan or to pay rent, that is a violation of Governor Sisolak's directive. And those are being prosecuted aggressively by the Attorney General's office. So you should either file a complaint with the Attorney General or contact legal aid for some assistance. The second thing I want you to think about is alternatives to a repayment plan. Have you talked to your landlord about potentially a reduction in rent? Let's say, for example, you're, you're getting unemployment, but it's not enough to pay the full amount of your rent, but you can pay something. Your landlord may be able to reduce, may be willing to reduce your rent during this time period, and maybe going forward as well. Um, but it certainly hurt. It, do, it certainly doesn't hurt to ask. Um, the other thing I'd like you to think about is asking your landlord to apply your deposit. Maybe you're, if you have a deposit that your landlord is holding and you're um, going to be short on rent, then maybe your landlord could apply that to the shortfall. These are all things you could explore with your landlord, in addition to the possibility of a, a pay, repayment plan. Now, the third thing that, I, that you should think about is the viability of a payment plan going forward. So now there, there are some situations where a payment plan will make perfect sense. There are other situations where not entering into a payment plan will make perfect sense. Now, the reality is most people will fall somewhere in the middle. Let's say, for example, you love where you live, you have a great relationship with your landlord, you think you're going to be called back to work fairly quickly, and that you're going to be making roughly the same amount of money. You want to stay in the apartment where you live in, you really don't want an eviction, and you think you will be able to make enough money so that you will be able to make your rent, monthly rent payments and pay a fairly sizable sum in addition to make up any back rent you've missed within a reasonable amount of time. Now, in that situation, a pay repayment plan may make perfect sense for you. But let's look on the other end of the extreme. Let's say, for example, that you don't know if you're going to be called back. You don't know if you'll make any money um, when you do get called back. You may have a rocky relationship with your landlord, and your, your current rent may be too high, and you may have to find other housing, such as um, moving back home or moving in with a friend. Maybe you have other bills, and so even if you start making money, you will not be able to pay a sizable chunk in addition to your regular monthly rent, so you'll never be able to pay that rent back. In that situation, you probably shouldn't end in, enter into a repayment plan. Why enter into a repayment plan that you'll never be able to adhere to? So, but like I said, most people will fall generally in the middle. So here are some things that you'll probably want to think about. What's your current income, and how long is that income going to last? Specifically, unemployment. How much are you getting, and how long are you going to get it? How likely are you to return to work, and when are you likely to return to work? And when you do return, are you likely to make the same amount of money and have the same number of hours? Um, is your rent likely to stay the same? Do you have a lease agreement that protects your rent, or could your rent potentially go up? Do you have other bills that are likely to stay the same? Um, and on top of those bills, will you be able to pay a reasonable amount to the landlord to make up any back rent over a reasonable length of time? I don't know that a landlord would, would uh, go more than a year on repayment. 
and more likely nine months I think is probably what you're looking at so that could be a payment of an additional three four hundred dollars depending on what your rent is every month will you be able to do that also look at the likelihood of you staying in the apartment if you're gonna to have to move out of state for a job you certainly don't want to enter into a repayment plan also Think about whether you are in fact okay with having an eviction on your record and potentially being sued. If you do break your lease, or if you choose not to enter into a repayment plan, the landlord could potentially evict you. So that could result in a lawsuit. So down the line, are you okay with that? Can you live with that stress? The last thing that you should consider is whether or not during this emergency, you will be able to pay partial rent. If you're able to pay at least some rent, or if your landlord's unwilling to accept the rent, are you able to save some rent? So that at the end of this emergency, the amount you owe will not be astronomical. In some cases, if you, if you pay a lot in rent and you are able to pay nothing during this emergency, at the end of the emergency, you may never be able to pay that amount. So it may not make sense to enter into a repayment plan. So here are some things to think about if you do decide to enter into a repayment plan. Remember that during the emergency, no late fees can be charged and no other fees can be charged. So those should not be included in any type of repayment plan. Have realistic expectations. Remember that your landlord's under no obligation to enter into an agreement with you, just like you're not in, under any obligation to enter into one with your landlord. So approach your landlord with something that's reasonable. It's a reasonable monthly payment to make up the amount you owe over a reasonable length of time. It's got to be something that both parties agree on. And frankly, if both parties are a little bit unhappy with it, then that's probably a good agreement. Be transparent. Your landlord may want some verification that you are in fact suffering from financial difficulties at this time. That's okay. There is nothing legally that prevents them from asking you about that or from require certain, requiring certain documentation before they enter into a payment plan. So communicate with your landlord and be as transparent as possible within reason. Also, document, document, document. If you decide to enter into a repayment plan with your landlord, that should all be reduced to writing. There should be no oral agreements about what this repayment plan looks like. Both parties should be perfectly clear about what's gonna happen. Now, if in negotiating with your landlord and documenting this agreement, your landlord wants to stick in a bunch of strange provisions or things that you don't understand, then you need to be careful. Before you execute that, before you sign, you should bring it into Legal Aid Center so that we can at least sit down with you and explain what that agreement means. If you have any questions, Legal Aid Center is taking calls and we are trying our best to answer every, every person so that they can reach somebody live. So do not hesitate to call. Our number is 702-386-1070.